G'day guys, Shane here. If you're a business owner and you sell products online through your online store, through Etsy, eBay, Craigslist, or even Gumtree, and your photos look like this, and you want them to look like this, so hang around guys, I'm going to show you four ways to really up your photo game. It's cheap and it's easy. Hang around. Before we get into it though guys, we're going to need a few things to actually do the, do the job. First of all, we're going to need a subject. In this case, so I think we'll use this cup here. This cup is a pretty cool little cup, it's a clay cup. We got this cup on our last trip in Japan. We found a little uh, alleyways there with some uh, small artisan sort of shops. And the lady that was in this shop here, she actually makes these out the back there. It was a pretty cool place. Look, to be honest, I can't wait to go back. Second thing we're going to need is some sticky tape. Sticky tape, regular roll, sticky tape, cellar tape, whatever you want to call it. We're going to put this uh, on the wall, so if you're going to put it on a painted surface in your house, make sure it's some sort of tape that's not going to pull the paint off. Third thing we're going to need is a camera. As we're all about mobile photography here, you may as well grab your phone and throw it down as well. And the third thing that we're going to need is some lighting, some really expensive lighting. You can go out and spend a couple of thousand dollars on some lighting to do these photography. And uh, to be honest, let's just grab some cardboard. First of all, lighting. Lighting is the most important thing with photography. Most photographers walk around different locations and all they're doing is looking for light. Uh, to be honest, when I do uh, weddings and so forth, I'll get some of the customers, the bride and groom, and I'll get them to go and stand in a weird spot. And I'll say, just trust me, the photo will look cool. Because the lighting is really quite cool. There's three types of lighting. One is artificial lighting. You can go and spend a couple of thousand dollars on lighting to do your photography. But uh, as I said in the beginning, looking for a cheap way to do things. Second thing that you can do is uh, use the outside natural light and most of the time that's pretty good. If it's an overcast day that's almost always going to be on point. It'll work really well. It can be really harsh though so when it's a bright cloudless sky it's going to be pretty harsh so you need to be careful of that. The third type of lighting is ambient light. It's kind of a cross between the two. And that's what we're going to aim for here today. We're going to use some of the natural light from outside and we're going to try and manipulate that in a way that uh, will bring some nice shadows, soft shadows to the photo. So the way I look around my house is I look and use my hands. I use the shadows on my hands. If you look here, you'll see that the shadows on my hands are soft rather than a harsh sunlight sort of silhouetted shadow. This location is going to be okay. Let's run with it. A little bit about this cardboard guys. So all it is is a piece of cardboard. It doesn't have to be cardboard. It can be anything white that is reflective. And the reason for that is if you have a look at my face right now, I'm next to the window where the sun's coming in. It's a pretty harsh sun. I'm not in direct light, but the window's diffusing it enough and giving it a broader um, paint, if you like, with the light. So what we want to do is remove the shadows from this side of the face. If I use this cardboard, and just watch the face as I bring it up, and you see that the light's reflecting onto this side of the face. And it's giving it a lot less shadow, certainly a lot less harsh shadow. And that's what we're aiming to do with any of this sort of photography. We can spend thousands of dollars on lights, or a dollar on a piece of cardboard. So the setup that we're using today, I'm just using this old antique side table. It's uh, really dark, the wood colour is really dark and the, the leather that's on top there is a green colour with a bit of gold through it. I thought it might work well with this cup. We'll see if it does or it doesn't. We're going to bring in this cardboard. You can basically uh, find this in your new, local newsagent. I think these cost me less than a dollar each um, and they're perfect for this size uh, of photography. So we'll take this onto the window. And so we've got a nice flat matte colored backdrop. We'll put the cup on the table here and we'll see if it's going to work with the color of the leather with the backdrop there of the matte black. So a pro tip here, you see that I'm using the camera upside down, holding the phone upside down. I hold it between my index finger and my pinky finger and my thumb is actually the, the finger that pushes the, the uh, shutter button. I do this mainly because the lenses are so close to the edge of the camera. So when you turn it upside down, that means you can get the lenses really close to the ground, closer than any other camera, a regular camera can. So almost all the photos I take, the camera's held upside down. And there's the photo. What do we think? 
well, it's it's okay. It's better than what we took than I showed you when we first in the intro. The dots that are there, there's bits of dust particles. We can get rid of those in editing later. But uh, there's definitely something missing from this photo. Let's carry on. Tip number two. Tip number two is about props and the props that we can use to take photos. So but we think about the subject that we're shooting and, and the subject that we're shooting here today is a cup. So what do we use a cup for? We use it for tea, coffee, that sort of thing. In this case, we're going to get, use tea. So we'll grab a tea bag and we'll use a tea bag. We'll use a spoon as well, a teaspoon. And because the cup is this sort of a, a natural earthy sort of a color, we're going to use earthy colors to complement it. It's things like uh, grays, greens, uh, things like that. But I found this tea towel. It's a cool little tea towel with crosses on it. And I've got a feeling it might work with the Japanese sort of um, pottery that we're playing with here. So we'll give it a go as well. One of the really important parts about using props is that the props cannot overtake what it is that you're shooting. It must complement it, but it can't be the central focus of it. So if you're bringing in a prop, say a, uh, in this case here with a cup, say we brought in a big red teapot, the tea, big red teapot would overpower that small little cup. Um, so um, be mindful of what you're using as a prop. So with the props in mind, let's have a look and see what else we can do with this photo. Um, so you saw the wooden cutting board that I showed you in that last bit of footage and um, I really like the wood grain on this so I'm going to have a look at this first and put it underneath the backdrop so the backdrop curves into um, the cutting board if, you, if this is what you're going to use, something similar to this. Always try and get rid of the dust and all that sort of business first, it'll save you a bit of time in the edit afterwards. So I'll set the cup on here. I'm going to try and use those lines and we'll talk about that again in a minute. I wanted to try also some of that white cardboard here so you can see the effect. Have a look left hand side of the cup as we look at it and you can see the shadows coming in and going out as you bring the, the uh, white cardboard in and out. Um, to be honest though, I'm, I'm pretty happy how it is. The light's diffused enough without using that white cardboard. But if it was too harsh, you would absolutely use that white cardboard. So we'll set up now, we'll take a photo with just the backdrop, with the lighting that we've got there on the uh, wood, and we'll see how we go. Again, upside down, and don't forget to touch the subject on the screen so you can expose and focus properly as well. And there's the photo already. I think that is a damn sight better than what we just took before. For the record, I did try the tea towel and I did try the spoon and the tea bag. To, to be honest, I didn't think that the tea towel brought anything to it, nor did the spoon or the uh, tea bag. So it's worth trying these things anyway. Now, of course, you don't need to use props. You can certainly use a much more clinical way uh, approach to this sort of photography. We'll do what's called an infinity curve and we'll go through that now. So basically what an infinity curve is, is using the one piece of cardboard and we're going to bring it down from the window, make it lower so that the same piece of cardboard is also the base of the photo. So there's no join in the uh, cardboard, it's, it's one single piece. So it doesn't give a, an angle. When you look at the photo at the end, basically you see nothing but the infinity behind the cup, just like that. The third thing we're going to look at is Composition. Composition, you might roll your eyes and go, man, I know all this stuff here. There's really not that many things to know about the rules of composition when it comes to this style of photography. We talk about the rule of thirds, rule of thirds, everyone's heard of it. It's got the grid lines across the top, across the screen. You, you think about it or you can actually put it on some cameras. You certainly can do it on your phone. Um, and you put the subject on one of those intersecting lines. We'll talk about that in another uh, tutorial. But in this sort of photography, when we're talking about a small cup, it's probably not going to work, especially with the way that we're doing it there. The second rule of composition that may work in some cases, in, depending on what you're, what you're photographing, is filling the frame, and that is putting the subject into the frame and it takes up most of the frame. So there's not much else around in that photo besides the subject that you're shooting. Again, this cup is small, so we're probably not going to get it there. But if you had an object that was slightly larger than that, you may want to consider that rule. The third rule that we're going to talk about here is leading lines. You see that I'm using that uh, piece of wood there, the wood grain there, and the crosses on that tea towel make a good leading line into the subject. It draws your eye into the subject. So that can be quite effective as well. The last one that we'll talk about here is negative space. Negative space in advertising, especially around social media advertising, is the sweet spot. You want some negative space there so that you can put some text into there later to show 
where it's made, maybe your logo, um, the price of it, promotion thing that you're going on, um, some sort of thing like that. All right, tip number four is editing. Editing for this photo, we're going to use an app called Snapseed. It's free for both Android and iOS devices. I'll link in the uh, description here as to where you can download that from. If you're into the editing of all your photos, make sure you subscribe to the channel so you can see my three minute Thursdays. We use apps like Snapseed, apps like uh, Adobe Lightroom and Lens Distortions and we edit photos nice and quick in three minutes. Okay, we've opened the app. Uh, Snapseed and we've imported the photo. For those of you who are not familiar with Snapseed, make sure you check out the 3 Minute Thursdays. The first thing we notice with this photo is it's not quite straight. The background there is not straight. So we'll go into Tools, go into the Rotate tool and touch and slide to the right and it will straighten out. You can see with those grid lines there it's nice and straight. Hit the tick down the bottom and apply that. There's the before and after. Next thing we'll go into Tune Image, into the Tools and Tune Image. In that tool there we'll increase the contrast a little. We want a little bit more separation between the cup and the woodwork there. We'll increase the ambience as well, it's similar to the temperature. We'll increase it slightly, bring the shadows up a little bit. We'll probably bring the highlights down a little bit to the background, just slightly. The last thing is the warmth, we'll increase that a little bit too with the temperature. Happy with that, hit apply, then we're going to go down to tools again into the vignette and we're going to decrease the brightness of the outside of the photo to give the whole image a bit more contrast. Then we're going to the, the structure tools and the sharpening tools and we'll give it a little bit more detail in the woodwork especially. You zoom in there and you can see there's a few specks of dirt or dust. Go into tools, the healing tool zoom in on those and just touch each one and the app will take care of them it'll get out get rid of them for you nicely we'll just go around the image now make sure there's no more bits of dust on the wood and i think that will be it it looks pretty good we'll zoom out and have a look yeah that looks pretty good i'm happy with that let's go and export the image save a copy so you keep the original and there you are, we're done. And that's what the image looks like straight away. I've put it into another app and I've put some wording there so you can see the, exactly the sort of thing that that negative space can bring to your photo. Okay, that's it for the edit. That's it guys. Thanks for coming along today. If you like what you're seeing today, hit the like button down below. If you've got any questions about what I'm showing you here today, put a comment down below as well. I'll answer all the comments that I get. Lastly, if you like these sort of tutorials every week that we're bringing to you and the three minute Thursdays that we bring to you, hit the subscribe button down below so you don't miss out on anything. Take it easy guys, have a good day.